You're watching Telecom TV from the Etsy Summit on 5G. And I'm joined now by Jed Owens of the European Patent Office. Jed, thanks for talking to us on Telecom TV. How does Etsy and the European Patent Office cooperate in the areas of standards and patents? The area of patents and standards is a difficult area, basically because patents are exclusive rights by nature and standards are things that are supposed to be used by everybody. So how do you combine patents with exclusive rights and standards? Uh, and our cooperation with Etsy is to optimise the governance around patents and standards. Um, there are certain elements which are important. So one of those is to maintain a high patent quality. We should only grant patents which are genuine inventions in this area, so that we minimise the exclusive rights which are incorporated into standards. And one of the main aspects of our cooperation with Etsy is to get all of the standards development documentation from Etsy. We use that in our prior art searches to find out what is new and what is an inventive. And we, for instance, we prevent the granting of patent rights to um, technologies which have been disclosed in the standards development processes. So if somebody is a genuine inventor or an enterprise is a genuine inventor of a technology, they should file that patent before they come to the standards bodies and they know that. And what we therefore do is we prevent inventions or patents being granted to inventions that have already been disclosed and discussed in these standards bodies. So the first thing is that very high patent quality that we try and maintain. Uh, and the second aspect is patent transparency. So to maximize the transparency of patent rights in these standardization areas, Etsy maintains a database of standard essential patents. Now that links into our database so people can see um, for a particular patent, what is the patent document, what is actually claimed, what are the other family members of that patent, in other words, what other countries have the, has the patent been filed in, and are those patents still alive or not. So what do you define as an essential patent? Well, an essential patent is a patent that, um, in its definition of the scope of protection, includes a technology that would be used in the standard. In other words, if you were to carry out that technology and use that standard, you would infringe this patent. What are the advantages of FRAND licensing? To make patents, exclusive rights, combined properly with standards, certain uh, elements are essential. Firstly, the people must declare if they have patent rights as the standard process develops, so that people know when they agree to a standard what patent rights are involved. That's the first element. And the second element is that all the people who declare that they have standard essential patents have to agree that they will license these technologies on a FRAND basis. They will license them on a fair and reasonable basis and also on a non-discriminatory basis, in other words, to everybody that wants to have uh, that technology. How will the EPO use standards development documentation to ensure that exclusive rights are only granted to genuine innovations and inventions? Generally, it's well known in Europe that you have to file a patent before you disclose something. So every professor in a university, every person in a research and development uh, establishment is educated that they are not allowed to disclose their inventions outside before they patent them. And this is also well known in all of the research and development uh, uh, institutions and enterprises that come to the standardization process. Therefore, they are fully aware of that. Now, what we can do is by collecting and collating all of the standards documentation and putting it in our internal databases so that it's very easy for our patent examiners to search these, um, we ensure that people don't put ideas together that they hear in the standards discussions and then try and file a patent afterwards. There is some evidence of this from the academic field. There is a guy called Rudy Beckers who's done a lot of work in this area and he's shown that you can get a flurry of patent applications before a standards meeting 
but you can also get a number of patent applications immediately afterwards. And that tends to be people patenting or trying to patent things that they've heard or put together from a, a standards development discussion. And by collating the information and using that to search, we are able to ensure that only genuine patent rights are granted. As networks move from a more proprietary hardware-based architecture to a software one, the role of virtualization is increasing. What does that mean for patents? What we see at the European Patent Office is that uh, computer-implemented inventions are now over 30% of our applications across all technical fields. So the computerization, optimization is coming into all technical areas. And we're now having to cope with this idea of virtualization across all of the different technical fields. So it's very, very important. And at the European Patent Office, through our concept of the computer implemented inventions, we have a fairly stable legal, legal framework now, which has been established, so that it gives good consistency and good predictability of what is patentable and what is not. Nevertheless, it is an increasing challenge with the development of the Internet of Things and Industry 4.0. We're seeing more and more virtualization. And um, one of the challenges is also through claim drafting that to cope with virtualization, the definition of the scope of a patent is in some ways becoming broader and that risks, that broader definition, risks the possibility of something being declared not new. Um, so there are challenges there. These things are being developed, but there are no new concepts particularly. It's just that uh, the Internet of Things and Industry 4.0 is heightening the existing issues. Jed, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.